it's time to take a look at internal style sheets. Let's go back and revisit where we left off. We had changed my FDR's first inaugural address page so that the text of the first paragraph was read. And the way that we did that was that we added this style to the first paragraph. Now, let's go up into the head section and let's put in a style here. And this is what we would be called your internal style sheet. Okay? And so we begin with a style tag and we specify the type of the style is equal to quote text slash CSS and close that up. Now style is a toggle tag so we have to close it. And we'll put everything we want in our style enclosure here between our style on and style off. And the first thing that I want to put in is the body. We haven't done anything to the background yet. So let's change the background and I'm going to use a curly bracket and say background color is beige. Now let's come down and let's say paragraph P, curly bracket, color is blue. Okay, now those are the only two things I'm going to change right now. So let's save it out. And let's refresh our page. Now, you'll notice the change in the background color from white to kind of a creamy off-white or beige. You'll also notice that my paragraphs, beginning with paragraph 2, are blue. But par my first paragraph is still red. And you might be saying, well, that's kind of... That's intriguing. Why is it still red? Well, this style sheet, this internal style sheet, refers to the entire document and changes all of the attributes. But then we encounter this style and this one overrides the blue. So let's take it out and make this just a plain old paragraph just like any other paragraph in our web page. Let's save that out and when we refresh it our first paragraph is back to blue. So your internal style sheet controls the entire web page. But any inline styles that you would use in the body override those specifications. Now, that's pretty handy, but there's a better technique. And that is to take your styles and to put them into an external file and include a reference to that external file in your web page. And when you do this across the website, you've now got one file to use to control your entire website. And we'll see that in the next podcast.